But that's nice. Then I can have a half an hour sleep and you can uh, do the half pint. That's nice. <laughs> Go on, close your eyes. See if you can fall asleep with us watching you. Ah, but let's double back. I had to Google this, but uh, talking about ads, I, I saw one of the funnier ads I've seen in years this week, and it is... Um, it's a UFC fighter. I, I don't really know much about them, but it's called Alex Volkanovsky or something like that. And I, th- I think it turned 35 years old. And then, of course, people started commenting that he might be too old and seeing his prime. So he made an ad. <laughs> and it's bloody brilliant. <laughs> it's like uh, there's a reporter coming over to him and it's like opening the door. Take off your shoes. Take off your shoes. And he's like wearing a a tweed robe or something and is bringing people in and yeah and the journalist asks like uh, what do you think about these rumors about people saying you're too old i don't know what you're on about mate and is sitting there and making jam and then of course he's out <laughs> doing gardening work and uh, <laughs> eating like old people's pastels and so, so on and just doing every stereotypical old person stuff and <laughs> it's brilliant i'll send you a link yeah, you should. I've not seen that one. I mean, if all the ads were funny as I remember them being, then that would be nice, but yeah. So, the only thing left on my list is uh, depressing statistics. So, uh, does anyone have any other more uh, positive uh, angled things to talk about? <laughs> I'm open. I got some good statistics and some depressing ones at the same time (laughs) so i'm averaging nearly a subscriber a day at the moment which is nice at least it's going upwards albeit very slowly but um now i'm over a year old and i'm past a year since my my highest performing video went out my hours are dropping down dramatically yeah i've lost over 700 hours over the last couple of weeks off my uh list which is uh a little bit depressing, but it's all good. It's um, I'm trying not to let it pressure me into finishing the uh, mini bass little guitar, <laughs> six less two string thing that I'm making at the moment. Oh, you're uh, you're two times two string instrument, yeah. That's a... <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good way of doing it. Yeah. <laughs> uh... So I'm just trying not to let it uh, pressure me into hurrying that along and taking my time with it and enjoying the build. I, uh, I've i had the same experience, but I seldom go into looking at the statistics for a whole year. So I'm just using the standard 28 days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And of course, the number has been kind of stable, but of course you have all these small connotation arrows that indicates you're going up or down of course they have been turning a bit down and of course if i spanned through the whole year i realized that uh, the original hell quarter video was in january last year so i passed a year so of course it's not counting that yet and that was so huge that it really pulled up everything so uh yeah but it kind of when I'm now going on the 28 day scale, it's more realistic because you doesn't have you. I don't have that peak in the beginning of the year anymore. Yeah. So of course it's it's more realistic, but more depressing. But I mean that's, <laughs> yeah. I mean only it's thing, a, I guess. Yeah, it's only been a, a bother in my mind because I wanted to get to that monetization stage, not because I ever think I'm going to be a famous rich YouTuber or anything like that. I just wanted to get to that stage. And then the pressure's off. It doesn't matter. The hours can drop away all they like after that. But, but they it's, can't, uh, when though. You try... <laughs> I mean, I, I I, haven't heard about anyone losing it. But, I mean, if you drop under again, you can actually lose it. I think it says with small writing somewhere. But I thought it was just if you didn't mm-hmm. post within um, a certain amount of time. Oh, yeah, maybe that was keep it. posting. Yeah. 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 But it doesn't matter if you drop below the 4,000 hours again. Yeah, that is true and that was a ridiculously long you could wait was it three years or something between every video I, it was or was it three I think months it, I, no. think it's, I think it's yeah. a year now yeah no. that's what's in my mind anyway yeah. yeah so that's the only reason it's been a bother to my mind yeah, yeah my, my big watch hump was in the middle of uh, 2022 
2022 that's called um so uh, it's over uh, over a year ago since i was in the same right. <laughs> had the same gloomy <laughs> feeling so i'm over it i mean over it's, it since long. it's yeah. all positive i mean i'm i'm averaging a, a dollar a week so uh <laughs> i mean i'm not gonna buy the lamborghinis and so uh just yet and i think I'll, I'll i'll buffer up a bit before i go down that path but uh <laughs> yeah but <laughs> the most de- depressing part is like all right so it was january last year i thought it was march but it turns out it was january i posted the hell corner video which means that <laughs> well that video did good and the plan was that was it i was finished with it it was the last stint just to get it out of my <laughs> life and then oh fuck people was interested in that so all right i'll do a follow-up video and then ooh, people were really interested in that and here i am <laughs> a year later yeah um quite a few dollars <laughs> invested <laughs> And time wise, let's not talk about it, but yeah, <laughs> and not finished yet. <laughs> so, I did say in one of our very first podcasts that's when the problem starts is when people start watching your videos. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it could be more true. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing, I'm not, I'm just as eclectic in my videos that I, like. I am in my interests. I mean, yeah, the hell quarter is like a red, thin red line, but everything else I'm doing is just because that's interesting or I want to try that. Or So if you are watching two of my videos and then you subscribe, and that's probably also the people I'm losing after a month or two because they realize, all right, he's not, a, he's not a leather worker. No, he's not a woodworker. No, he's not a... Arduino kind of person, so I mean, yeah. but it works. It's it's stable numbers, which is okay. Yeah, I mean the maker audience is is limited. You have to be fine with that. Yeah, if yeah. you. Oh well, in a, in a more positive note, I realized that uh, this was my sixtieth video. So oh, wow. that's a, that's a celebration at least or something. And uh, those are no, I mean those are numbers that you can control how many videos you put out there. So yeah. those are those are better numbers to actually celebrate I think. So now we just have to celebrate it in some way. So if you get up to 67 and you're feeling a little bit low you can just delete a few videos and get back down to 60 and have another celebration game. <laughs> <laughs> that's that feels like cheating I would say. <laughs> But the question is, I, I see if you look at the statistics, um, and it's it's kind of fun where you are at that stage that you you get a subscriber a day because if you go and look at what videos are watched, you can see that all right, your top five videos have a, a few views during the week, and then if you scroll down the list, your earliest videos got like one view, one view, one view, and then that must be the one guy who subscribed because then he's watching your older stuff as well. Yeah. Which is nice. But most people, myself included, I, if I stumble over someone, they need to be really good for me to like, all right, I watch another video and then watch another video. But yeah, like even Laura Kampf, I haven't watched her every video from the beginning, although I'm religiously watching them now. And that got me thinking, well, if people don't do that, and I have become better at editing videos, so maybe I should start to re-release some of my first videos <laughs> because it, it only needs an afternoon of re-editing, some new music, maybe some commentary, and then it's a completely new video. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. Uh, of I course, think... a few people will, like, I've seen this before, but yeah, well, you know, it's... It needs so it needs to add something. It needs to be better or funnier in the commentaries or something. But uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you like talking in your videos. You could quite easily just you know put some music to it, add some captions. Different video, isn't it? Different feeling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that is, uh, I was going to top the <laughs> given the fix it fingers input on the 
I mean, the super cuts, I, I'm thinking about a mega cut. Um, and of course, <laughs> I have a playlist that I call the Hellcorder Chronicles. So all the videos that is related to that, I also add to that playlist. So I started thinking maybe at the end of it, I should just bash all the Hellcorder videos into one. And then I realized that's going to be quite a few hours of video. And then should I just get hammered and do like a one take voiceover? <laughs> but it's yes. going to be like, it's going to be like a six hour <laughs> marathon voiceover. And then uh, of course you should one invite someone else and just sit around having a piss and uh, commenting live <laughs> on the video. I just record it and then upload it. But maybe when do you want it's it to a come. Sw- Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But maybe it's a sweet spot for the supercuts because if you go into three hours plus, you're into Titanic Dune territory. And I mean, uh, yeah. people are, well, yeah. That's something to fall asleep to. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> watch time is watch time. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care what you do. <laughs> I don't That's care if you're act- sleeping as long as you're watching. <laughs> That's the actual dream, isn't it? They're not going to tune out if they're asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I need to rethink my music choice. It's going to be pan flutes and uh, like this, uh, Ch- Chinese uh, string instruments. And uh, yeah. And you're just talking in a soft voice. Yeah. Yeah. I'll think of my softer voice. Talk slowly. I mean, that, could be, yeah. that could be the theme for your uh, uh, remixes of your old videos. The, the going to sleep edition. Yeah, the sleep edition. Yeah. You, you did one. A, a while ago that was like that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so you mean it comes naturally to him? Yeah. Only one? <laughs> Your first, the, the first um, uncut long form video that you did, that was that was a bit slow, wasn't it? <laughs> that was, uh, I could have slept to that. Yeah, that's... Uh... Yeah, I've got to admit, nice. I've got to admit, I watched your, um, your latest video on Sunday morning when I'd just woken up and I actually can't remember what it was about. I realized it was Hellcord related. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's again, that's brilliant because then, oh, what was it about? And then you have to go back and rewatch it. That is the best. I mean, that's really <laughs> engagement. Oh, people are going back and rewatching segments. Oh, this guy must be onto something. Huh? Let's push him uh, on the top of the line. <laughs> So when are you guys releasing the next video? You'll obviously do one for the weekend, Havard. Yep, that's... Uh, yep. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> anything planned, but we'll see. <laughs> Plenty of time yet. I'm, I'm there now that if I have 10 minutes of footage, well, that's enough for a video. Let's upload it. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, KJ? Yeah, I'm going to... When I'm finished editing this week's uh, podcast, I'm going to start with the next edit. Uh, that I have lined up. So I'm. I mean, my 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 initial goal was uh, one video a month uh, this year, and so far it's looking good. Uh, yeah. Three for three. <laughs> so yeah, it's probably gonna come out in the later part of March, I think. But yeah, who knows? I'm in no rush. I, I mean, I should really do it because the one I have filmed now and the one that I've planned to f- have. Uh, two videos ahead from that as well. Both of them uh, have quite a lot of snow in them, so it feels kind of odd publishing them in the middle of summer. But yeah, uh, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 I mean, it's not like I'm holding back on them. I just, it's I don't. I have a limited number of hours in the day, and I don't think I don't know. I don't know much about Sweden. You could have snow in the middle of summer for all I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sometimes, but not those amounts no <laughs> but i mean people don't care or they don't notice and either way yeah. it's fine mm-hmm. by me so at some point i thought maybe i should put on the the same t-shirt as yesterday to have consistency in the vi- oh fuck it so i'm 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 changing clothes the same day if needed to and i'm not doing anything to keep the consistency in the videos i mean it's, no. it is what it is yeah, I've given up that for a long time ago. So. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, so. I think I'll be done with my project this week, and um, I just need to get 
Steve over to actually try it, see if it works. <laughs> so that's that's going to be the, the one thing holding it up, I think. How how scared are you about that? That it's not not it's not playable because I mean you're you're in no sh- no no offense, but you're in no shape to actually judge that for yourself. No, Steve's pretty creative though. So, so I mean, is it? I mean, that could be that he's so good that it doesn't really matter. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And it's too yeah. nice to say something yeah. bad as well. No, well, I did. I did um, last year. I did make a. Um, I did try and make a little electric drum kit, and that was a complete failure. But Steve tried as he might to try and get a tune out of it, and almost succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, I'm not worried if it if it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I think I still post it as a video. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's nice when when you have proper uh, YouTube drama yeah. <laughs> instead of faking. Yeah. Oh, oh, am I going to do it on time? Oh, no, I only have this and yeah. this. Oh, I hate it's, those things. It's not that hard to make an electric string instrument, to be, to be quite honest with you, though, KJ. It's, um, you know, you've got the electric pickup there. You've got some decent strings over it. Some, some noise is going to come out of it. Yeah. I mean, isn't it that... Like the fretboard is the hardest thing to get those lined. If you if you're doing it with with actual, but the thing is they yeah. have they have templates. Um, yeah, so they, the they, have, they have a, a template. It's a metal ruler with the slots in them, so you just mark the strings, and then of course they have this uh, clamp on for the special kind of saw you're using. So, yeah, I think yeah, maybe the. Any of that. I used a paper template just to take some measurements off for this one. Yeah. It, I mean, unless you're a professional musician, you can't really hear the difference. I, I couldn't. So, uh, yeah. but I, I think the most tricky thing about the neck, at least for a guitar, the, the string tension is so big that you have this thrust rod embedded in the neck so you can actually oh, yeah. pre-tension it the yeah. other way. and. If you're unlucky with the wood that you're using, so you have some kind of tension in the wood that it's twisting a bit, it's it's a nightmare. Uh, of course, they they assemble it and sand it and shape it uh, after it's assembled before they put uh, everything in, and then of course they do the sanding and so on the fretboards. But so it's I mean it's not difficult, it's... but you just need the right tools and know that you have to do all the steps. You can't really skip one yeah. of them. <laughs> I think it's even worse for bases as well, isn't it? They're a little bit longer. Yeah. I think they have difficulty with those. I think that's why when you see a lot of um, guitar making videos, all the necks seem to be, a lot of the necks seem to be pre bought, don't they? It's just the bodies that they make. Yeah. Yeah, I made uh, a few electric guitars and I always pre bought the the necks, like uh, semi finished. I just shaped uh, the headstock and so on and sanded it. Yeah gave it a finish but i did actually get to that point where i bought basically all the tools uh, without the specific vices and so on for actually making my own neck and i also have some wooden blanks for actually doing that but before i got that far i lost interest (laughs) so (laughs) so it's just sitting there in a box Uh, so maybe one day i'll complete something but uh yeah I think it'd be nice if you could play, um, you know, putting yourself together, putting a guitar together for yourself or something like that, and just, you know, getting the best electrics in there, some really nice strings on it, using just the really nicest materials. Oh, I, I did on the uh, the first electric guitar I built was because I could not find one with all the spec that I wanted. And of course, I also wanted this uh, Roland guitar pickup to media system, so it was built out of necessity and of course it's if you're going to pay for something like that you would have to have it custom built so then it would probably set you back six seven thousand euros or something if you would have a lithier to put all those things together um and of course it's uh I can see it from here it's hanging on my wall can't remember the last time i played on it i think uh I'm, I made a more traditional guitar later, and that's the one I picked down if I need it uh, to play something. But uh, it's 
basically wall decoration at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they do look good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was uh, like, uh, I mean, it's only 40 and still not too late to pursue the rock star uh, path. <laughs> so, uh, I think of most of them have started earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, of course, I'm not in the 27 club anymore, but that was never a goal. I mean, it seems like a bleak uh, goal. Um, but yeah, I think I think that if you if you own a guitar and can keep from playing it, then you're not guitarist material. <laughs> no, that's uh, that's true. And I'm I'm not yeah. a songwriter either, and I don't know how to sing, so. Of course, going to the uni and people, oh, you play the guitar, play or something. Well, I can play you some uh, rock riffs or some instrumental parts, but I don't sing worth of shit. And then, of course, that's that was how you got girls on the after parties and so <laughs> on and playing guitar. But nobody is interested in hearing you uh, playing some uh, acoustic <laughs> instrumental uh, without any singing. So. Uh, I think you're onto something there, KJ. With the uh, if you can leave it alone, you're not a, you're not a true musician. My my mate Steve has got a recording studio up the garden, full of instruments, and you can't just keep them there. They they migrate down into the living room. So you go yeah. to his living room. There's a guitar, a bass, a strum stick, a mandolin, <laughs> an electric cajon in the corner. <laughs> yeah, these are just for his these are just for his jamming sessions while he's you know down at the house. <laughs> But I think that's true for most things. I mean, if you have a lot of tools and you can keep from using them, then maybe that's not really your thing. You just yeah, but that's I always was amazed by that. I, my father played in a band when he was young, and he's he's a decent guitar player, uh, and of course, but after he got to be an adult, he just stopped playing. And I can understand it. Of course, you got kids, so you can't really travel around in a crappy van playing every weekend and so on. So it took me a few years to realize that it was maybe that he didn't have his friends to play with, and that was a fair part of the game. But when I was a kid, I never understood it because I could sit and trying to learn stuff on the guitar and he could just pick it up and he could just play something beautiful. That's way out of what I ever could achieve. And then it's like, oh, I still got it. And he just handed the guitar back and it could be a <laughs> year until the next time he touched the guitar. So I never understood that. And uh, going to uni as well, a, a good friend of mine, he's a brilliant uh, jazz pianist, but he just, at some point realized, well, this is basically not for me. So we went into engineering and he's doing that brilliantly. But he still knows to play the ass of almost everyone on a <laughs> piano. But he just doesn't. He has one in his living room for like the few times that he want to play something. But it's like, it's weird to have such a talent. And then it's like, mm, well, yeah, but. I don't really want to, and I choose something else because that's interesting. It's always a bit fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so going back to um, having loads of tools and not using them, KJ, you, we've glanced over it in the main episode, but you said you'd used a table saw. <laughs> How was it? <laughs> uh, kind of scary. Uh, yeah. but I remember uh, my first time, it was scary. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I I used the. I think it's been become my my thing of sta not standing behind it, but I, st I stood beside it instead, and and saw the pieces fl fly towards where I, where I should have been standing. Perhaps. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's. I think I feel like I have a lot of learning to do how to actually use a table saw. Yeah, because I've never used one before. I never had yeah. one. And never. But I yeah I do the same thing. I mean it's. I can't understand why people don't do it. I see all these videos on YouTube about kickback and flying debris and so on. I mean, it's it's a rotating blade. You have angular momentum and it's in one direction. So just stand yeah. to the fucking side. I do that and yeah. I, I cut everything from the side. Never had an issue with it. And then yeah. 
I mean, that, that's a, the same, it's like the standing same in with... the line of fire from a gun. I mean, it's just yeah. stupid. Don't do it. Stand to the side. So, yeah. You're I mean, doing I, great. I stand slightly to the side, but not at the side of the table. <laughs> <laughs> that was the same thing with changing nappies, but on the babies. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you're not standing in the in the line of fire. You rotate yeah. the baby ninety degrees, and then it's just, they can we all they want in that direction. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, maybe we should start uh, on on the side club. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute. That sounded weird. <laughs> I just uh, gave me a bit of a memory for when my son was a baby. I'm sorry if you're listening, because sometimes he does, but. Um, he was a uh, he'd been constipated all day and was lifting his legs up with cramps and things, and then at three o'clock in the morning, it uh, he decided to let loose. So I uh, I changed him and got the dirty nappy and cleaned him up and put him onto the into his cot, not on the changing table. And while he was in his cot with no nappy on, he went there as well. So I cleaned him up there, and I put him on a rug on the floor, and he went there. <laughs> <laughs> at which point you'd have thought I'd have learned my lesson wouldn't you yeah yeah nope that happened one more time I'd literally ran out of all the surfaces in his room <laughs> <laughs> shit everywhere oh. and he, oh. he, he slept really well after that though <laughs> I bet he did <laughs> yeah oh, yeah. yeah. you do it only once it'll... I don't think he'll mind me, um, you know, bringing this up now. You know, he's coming up for 21, six foot four, and just about to join the Marines. I'm sure it won't uh, have any impact on him at all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if well, that's we'll... uh, if that's uh, what it only takes to throw him off his game, then uh, <laughs> maybe the Marines <laughs> yeah. are not for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I still haven't bought any new tools, to be honest, but... Uh... I might have adjusted my expectations or yeah goals when it comes to a welder. So I'm thinking that uh, instead of buying that extremely expensive multi-welder, maybe I should just buy uh, a cheaper but decent TIG welder because that's what I want to learn. And if that's the only tool I got, then I have to do it because if I have something that uh, like a MIG or something, then... Uh, I've done that before and I'm decent, well, half decent at it. So then, of course, if you want to do something, you very easily default to that. So, yeah. so I was looking into that. And when I saw your video today, KJ, I'm like, Ooh, we're getting into that season where you can actually work outside since I don't have a weld shop. It's going to be outdoor. Yeah. And I do want to make a powerful water gun this summer. And I, I need a welder for that. <laughs> so maybe I should just start... Uh, Acquiring some tools and some clamp and some uh, magnet holders. And if I start small and then, well, I have everything except the welder. So now it's stupid not to yeah. get one. So <laughs> <laughs> that's my plan this week. I'm going to buy the, the gloves and a couple of clamps. And then, uh... <laughs> well, this week we had um, one of the smoke alarms in the house started playing up. So I, I bought a new nine volt battery. So I bought tools this week. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, uh, let but, me know when you're moving up to the big boy club and uh, go 12 volts. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, so did I because I got new batteries for our surveillance uh, system. So, yeah. Yay. <laughs> so we bought new tools and Havar didn't this week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he never buys any. <laughs> well, that, I actually did because I um, I bought more clamps. So, uh, oh, nice. I now have, uh, I think I counted, I have 12 of that. Um, they're very cheap, but they are surprisingly good quality. I mean, it's one of these, uh, like, uh, cheap, uh, hardware stores that sell, like, okay equipment, but not anything to write home about but sometimes they, they score good and get something at a decent quality and these clamps are brilliant so I, I just pick up two or three of them every time I'm in that store so I'm thinking nice. what, when I pass what sort of clamps F clamps uh, no it's like a 
I'll find them. I don't know what they're called in English. The squeezy one-handed clamps? Yeah. One, yeah. One-handed squeezy clamps. I'm not like, sure. Uh... Like serious clothes pegs. Yeah. <laughs> you could like call them that, some, yeah. Somewhat. <laughs> uh, universal <laughs> squeezy clamp. Let's see. Uh... I'll send you a... Okay, I'll send you a screenshot, I think. This is brilliant podcast material is talking about something <laughs> sending screenshot and then uh... i don't think we've had a googling episode since we talked about uh, mountains that pop up from nowhere <laughs> oh oh yeah yeah and the, th yeah. the thing is that the joint is really good and i mean it's really strong so you don't want to get your fingers caught in those so they are surprisingly decent quality so yeah i think i used all my clamps when I glued the the front panel for the um, the hell quarter, and I realized I can never have too many of these. And I have like a, a angle bracket uh, on each side of my workshop holding the garage door, and it's very nice to just clamp them onto that angle bracket. So I still have room. So I now have clamps on every side of my workshop. So uh, I think I can. When I pass 20 of them, I might thinking about uh, cutting down, but uh, it's like a drug. <laughs> <laughs> I still have a uh, full set of um, the cheap F clamps, the ones that have the metal bar running down the back, which yeah. become useless after the first couple of uses. Yeah. But I just can't bring myself to throw them away. No. And it, there was a tip for just sanding those um, um, the edges on it. I think Tim Zergworks, I saw it on one of his reels ages ago. And it does work, but again, only for two uses, and then it's useless again. Yeah. I had the same with... Uh, it's like these auto-adjusting clamps. Um, it's like the, the, the pump action with the handle. And they're really good because you can do it one-handed. And uh, they had them on sale a few years ago like ridiculously cheap so i bought like 12 of them and i realized that two or three of them have now failed so they're, they're not the best quality so that might yeah. be why they had them on sale but they still sell them and it's i think the the brand is called Baco or something like that so it's semi-decent uh, yeah. tools but mm. uh yeah but they are really nice when you're doing something alone in the workshop and you need to clamp something and uh, <laughs> you don't have more than one hand. So they are kind of good. Yeah. I use a similar one, but I use the Irwin ones. I can recommend those. They've not failed me yet. I really like those. Yeah. yeah. I have a couple of different ones, which is kind of a pain because they all release in, in some different way. Some have a button <laughs> and some you have an, another. So I, I always, I just, Take one and put it on, and then take another one, and joof, that goes open. <laughs> so I, I, I never remember which one does which in the in the heat of the moment. So I'm always swearing of there not being one handed because they are, they go everywhere instead. Yeah. I had a little incident on the table saw um, early on this week. Just saw sawing along, and I made the just. I was on the guitar actually, and um, I just cut off the perfect wedge shape that slotted down in between the blade and the uh, clearance plate, and just jammed the whole thing. It didn't half make me jump. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's always fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a successful reel though because I filmed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, I, I, at first, I didn't understand what was happening, but then it it looked. Yeah, that's not nice <laughs> when it happens. Just the change in noise really made me jump. <laughs> <laughs> the the knowing something is wrong, but not not knowing what yet. Yeah, that's, that's not a funny <laughs> funny feeling. Not a fun feeling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's yeah, see. so I got that out as a short this week and YouTube release video. So, well, kind of got the memo. I'm going to count my short as that. <laughs> <laughs> content is content. Yep. <laughs> Sure is. Mm. Now, Horace started Googling. Yeah, I, I found out that the, the company that I bought the clamps from, they also have a plasma cutter. So, uh, 
Ooh, I hate that as well. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think Do you really? <clears throat> if I remove that one, I put on a lot of like magnet angles and clamps and so on. Let's see. Occasionally, Lidl or Aldi will sell a plasma cutter in their store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From the middle I, aisle. It just seems I, like the most weird thing to sell in a little supermarket. Yeah. I always wanted to try one of those just to yeah. see how, how bad they really are. But that that's the thing. Uh, uh, maybe I can get you on board this, KJ. But, I mean, I've been looking into welders. And in my mind... I don't, of course, I can understand that the components inside them might be of different quality, like the rollers and the feeders and everything. But basically, you take a metal string and then you put current through it so it melts. And the heat also uh, melts the material and it fuses together. And of course, uh, you have the variety of using DC current and then you can use AC current so you don't get too much heat input into the welding material. And then, of course, you have the welders with the... You can get LCD displays and you can just punch in material and thickness and so on and it calculates the parameters for you. But other than that, it is simple constructions in my mind. And I can't, for the love of me, understand that a TIG welder for $200 is so vastly inferior to something that costs 20 times the price. I mean, it's basically still the same components pushing current through a wire. <laughs> yeah. So I don't really... Where's the price different? I can understand the the thing with the, I mean, branding and so on. But at some point, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, in some way, it must be, as you said, the components being able to take heavy duty work to to work. I mean, eight hours a day, seven days a week, that sort of thing. Yeah, well, overheating and that sort of thing. But that also comes pretty fast at the limit and i mean there's no not really any moving parts in the tig welder and it's a, i mean that's the the computing part as you said with trying to figure out all the settings but that's just a, a, a sheet sheet of of how to yeah it's it's just the settings that's basically a fancy piggyback system that they slapped on you you have voltage and current control that's the two basic things and then you put a computer who just fiddles with those for you yeah and switching between the various kinds of current so i mean how hard can it be how expensive does it need to be i don't understand it no i mean it, it, they are some things when choosing the waveforms and that sort of thing, but those are also, I mean, those are kind of simple. So, yeah, I don't really understand it either. It must be, I mean, those, I think you can think of it as in the same way as cars that there, there is an, there are, there are shitty ones, the decent ones, and then the sky's the limit, just fancy stuff that you don't really need that's not. Yeah, just add-ons for the for the thing of it. Yeah, I think that's the closest analogy I can think of. You do like to talk about cars as well, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a yeah, there's a few, not that many things that I don't that I care <laughs> less about. Sports, probably, yeah. Sports and oh. cars. So I'm a really, I'm really, really fun with the with the lads. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not great with the sports either. KJ, did you watch that football match last night? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> What's your national sports, by the way? I think it's. Uh... It is. I think the national sport is probably cross country skiing but yeah to be fair most people i think watch football yeah yeah uh, but yeah 
Yeah, Sweden is pretending to be a, a football nation, but we're we're too few people and we're not that good at it. So we always wash out. So we really should be focusing on the on the winter side. I mean, the win- Winter Olympics, where like it's it's like Canada, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Russia, all the ones in the northern part. No one else cares about it. <laughs> but it is it is kind of fun because we have been delusional when it comes to to winter sports for many years and of course when it is at that level and you just keep throwing money and research at it of course people get good um but now it turns out that the americans have started well maybe you should try that as well so they're ramped up using money on the equipment and support staff and so on and Ooh, we are getting kind of close to the Norwegians now. <laughs> so, <laughs> hmm, weird. And then it was really fun when it was this um, uh, world championship uh, in like uh, winter games. I think it was in Japan. And of course, a lot of Norwegians fanatics, they traveled down there and was just mesmerized with like where are all the people because in norway it's it's a huge event even the the smaller races people uh, go out in the woods and uh, have a bonfire and a drink and make a day out of it of course in japan there was no people there except for the (laughs) few norwegians and the people actually working on arranging the championship and then of course the norwegian uh, broadcasting companies they went out uh, and talk to just uh, everyday Joes in the street and then like most Japanese like oh it's it's a world championship in Japan now <laughs> and they were like mesmerized like wh- wh- why didn't we know I mean oh cross country skiing and then they almost <laughs> laughed and of course the Norwegians were really disappointed I mean is this not the big world event that we thought it was it's <laughs> It's a bit like the Americans who have uh, a world uh, or uh, what what's it called uh, the world championship of uh, baseball or foot football yeah. or something. And it's <laughs> it's just America. I mean, it, it's easy to be the best when you're the only one participating. And yeah. it's a bit the same with the Nordic countries and cross country skiing. It's a very marginal sport worldwide, but we think this is what everybody is on about in the winter time. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. You guys are big on the um, the big high jump as well, aren't you? Does Norway lead the way in that? Yeah, but I mean, <sighs> now, it stands mm-hmm. to reason. I mean, you've got the weather for it there. You've got the lunatic asylums. Yeah, but th- then <laughs> so again, why wouldn't we you have... want to launch yourself down a big snowy ramp? <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a one of the. <laughs> The few funny Norwegian comics who's <laughs> passed away now, so of course, go figure. But he said, how interesting is this ski jumping? I mean, it's just physics. I mean, if you throw anyone down a steep <laughs> slope where it is a cutoff, they are going to fly long until they hit the <laughs> ground. And then, of course, it's just physics again when you slope that ground so that they don't like land flat surface, but you have a slope where you just continue sliding and then uh, you just uh, send anorectic boys down that slope. And then, of course, they're going to fly far because if it's a gust of wind, they will still be flying to this day. So, I mean, it's not really a sport, is it? I mean, it's just being yeah. dumb enough to like, oh, maybe I should go down here. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Oh, yeah. So if I ever get the uh, the chance to do it, I'll just look down that ramp and say, it's okay, it's just physics. Yeah. I've got this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of the winter sports, when it comes, it's just standing on a hill and just throwing yourself down in an insane way to the maximum speed yeah. possible. So, yeah. yeah, sat on a sledge I could get behind, but I think that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah I've always enjoyed watching curling for some reason because that's it's a, it's a slow, slow pace and it's kind of yeah. you just 
calculate the angles and that's really i mean that's just a physics lesson more or less a, a friend of mine in canada's just they just had their championship there and uh, she went to see it i think it was something like they were sat there for seven hours watching yeah it's, it's extremely <laughs> slow you really should see the see the highlights on tv instead and, and we tried it with with my with work at work and I just stepped out on the ice and tried to throw one away. I said, nope, this is not for me. I'm not going <laughs> to die here. I was going to say the same thing because we, I mean, it, it had a peak in popularity in Norway when we did good in a few competitions. But, and of course, then the company I worked in at the time, we did it as a team building. So we went um, out on curling and of course we, we got pissed before we went out on the ice, but <laughs> it's really funny with that one wonky shoe that you used to slide yeah. and everything, but it was real fun. But, uh, I must admit, I really enjoyed it, but yeah, uh, you should probably have worn a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, helmets are encouraged. So if you could, <laughs> that would be fun. If you could make curling into a contact sport, then now we're talking. So uh, I see potential. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting thought to end this half pint on, I think. <laughs> <laughs> To nice segue out of there. Yeah. <laughs> nice segue. I like that. <laughs> Can you segue out of something? I mean, I you think you just did. Yeah. You just did. Yeah, you just yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. That's a thing. I'm a natural. All right. Yeah. Good Screw night. Screw you, Evald. KJ can do it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Good night, kids. Bye. 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 <laughs>